July 30th, 1778, the Continental Congress passes the first whistleblower protection law in America. July 30th, 2016, we're here celebrating National Whistleblower Day. Who are these whistleblowers? They're people who use freedom of speech to challenge abuses of power that betray the public trust. Now, if they're isolated, the Government Accountability Project, where I work, we call whistleblowing the sound of professional suicide. But with solidarity, they personify why it's a cop-out to say you can't fight city hall or big business. They personify that we haven't lost control of our lives and we can still make a difference. Well, they need solidarity in a number of areas. First, they need solidarity to defend them against retaliation. Uh, and that means everything from informal investigations to days in court to review by the Supreme Court of the laws protecting them. You know, and it's funny. Increasingly, they're getting it. The Supreme Court supposedly can't agree on anything. But in every major test case of whistleblowing since 2000, um, the Supreme Court has overwhelmingly backed the whistleblowers. Uh, well, then there's solidarity from other witnesses. Uh, and uh, it's essential for the initial pebble of the truth to turn into a landslide that can't be denied, that can't be covered up. The truth is covering up the cover-up. Uh, and at GAP, we do investigations to help expand the circle of witnesses. And when that happens, then you need solidarity from the public. Uh, and it, where I work, we play information matchmaker with that evidence. It's not just legal cases. We do those, but they're legal campaigns for the truth where we unite the isolated whistleblower with everyone who should be benefiting from that dissent, uh, from their knowledge. And instead of a corrupt bureaucracy surrounding the whistleblower and isolating that person, we get the word out to uh, the media, to the politicians, to the law enforcement people, uh, to the communities that have been affected, to the citizens groups uh, who are um, uh, lifers in trying to fight those abuses of power, to the competitors of the people who are abusing their power, everybody who should be benefiting from that knowledge. And when that happens, instead of a corrupt bureaucracy surrounding the isolated whistleblower, it's society surrounding that corrupt bureaucracy. And the truth has turned into power. Well, they need solidarity a third way, from the law. Uh, and, you know, they're getting it. Uh, when I first came to GAP, we had one week law for government whistleblowers and just a couple of laws for the private sector. Now we've got 59 whistleblower laws blanketing our society. Uh, and when I first came to GAP in 1979, there was only one country in the world with a whistleblower law, the United States. Now there are 30 nations with whistleblower laws. Free speech rights have spread from the local level in Washington, D.C., to the federal level, to the United Nations, the World Bank, um, countries all over the world, Serbia, the most recent one in 2012, even Albania a few weeks ago. Uh, whistleblowing is the most dynamic area of international law that exists. But they can't have this solidarity without education. Uh, and so that means that we have to... Uh, be training government officials how to work with whistleblowers, training organizational leaders that this should be their best resource instead of turning them into enemies. Uh, we have to train our students in, in education and classes. Um, we have to share our lessons learned in books, such as um, our book, The Corporate Whistleblower Survival Guide, a handbook for committing the truth, the first 30 years of lessons learned uh, at GAP. Now, as long as we've had organized society, um, power has been getting abused. And sooner or later, somebody said, enough is enough, and was the pioneer of challenging that abuse. And you know, I think of Jesus as a whistleblower against the corrupt religious organizations. Um, I think Martin Luther was a whistleblower against the Catholic Church. Uh, the sailors uh, in the American Revolution uh, who sparked our first law, they blew the, whistleblower, the whistle on a corrupt commander of the Navy. Lincoln deputized the whistleblowers in the Civil War to file citizen whistleblowing lawsuits, and it's morphed into America's most effective anti-corruption law. But, you know, no, 
no matter what we call them, um, whistleblowing, it's nothing special about the name. There's nothing magic about that. Yeah, in the Netherlands, they're called bell ringers. That the people who climb the church tower and ring the bells to warn the town of danger. Uh, in some countries, they're called lighthouse keepers, after those who shine the lights on the rocks that were hidden but would sink ships. In Africa, they're called public sentinels because they're defending the people. But no matter what we call them, whistleblowing is freedom of speech when it counts the most. Now, it's easy to have freedom of speech at a sports event where the referee calls a foul on the wrong athlete and 40 or 50,000 people have the freedom to call that referee any name they want to. Uh, well, why? It's, it's hard to retaliate against 40 or 50,000 people. Uh, and it wasn't a secret. Uh, the, the mistake was probably televised, <laughs> and everybody could see it. Well, it's a lot different if you're thinking about blowing the whistle. There may be only a few people who know the truth. And whoever is abusing the power is desperate to make sure that no one else learns about it, um, because then it couldn't continue. Makes this very high stakes and very, very dangerous. Uh, well, whistleblowers use freedom of speech in a few different ways. The most that we usually think about is the freedom to protest. That's kind of the stereotype. That's very significant. Uh, whether it's demonstrating in the streets or appearing on a television program to expose corruption or testifying in Congress or even being a witness at a government anti-corruption trial. Whistleblowers are the agents of accountability this way. Uh, you can't have law enforcement, you can't correct problems without people being to bear witness and testify. Uh, but I think there's an even more significant use of freedom of speech by whistleblowers. That's the freedom to warn, to prevent avoidable disasters before it's too late for anything except damage control, picking up the pieces, or finger pointing. Whose fault was it? And those are important, but um, they're not much solace for the, the families of victims from tragedies that never should have happened if we'd only listened. You know, this doesn't just apply to the public at large, organizational leaders too. We're always advising organizational leaders that whistleblowers should be their eyes and ears, their best resources, because the problems have been covered up from them in the middle of the bureaucracy. And they might not know about them until it's, they're being blamed and held accountable because the buck stopped with them. Um, whistleblowers can make a difference uh, if we listen to them. Uh, I tell the organizational leaders, look, you know, it's bad business to silence or kill the messenger. Well, you know we have all these different uh, lessons learned and ideas, but why do the whistleblowers do it? What makes them expose themselves to retaliation? They're at a, a life's crossroads. Uh, nothing will ever be the same after this decision. Uh, and it's a crossroads where they have to pick between valid but conflicting values that we're all raised with. And for example, we don't like um, naysayers and troublemakers and people who are cynical. We like team players. Um, but on the other hand, we don't like bureaucratic sheep and we value rugged individualists. Well, we don't like tattletales and finks and rats. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't have much respect for people who look the other way, don't want to get involved. Um, it's still one of America's national disgraces that 60 years ago, a woman, Kitty Genevieve, was murdered and raped on the streets of New York, and everybody closed their curtains. They didn't want to get involved. You know, and, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. We think of that as monkeys, not as human beings. Whistleblowers have to choose. Or what about the right to privacy versus the public's right to know? Or loyalty. You know, we're all raised that our first loyalty should be to support our families. And you blow the whistle, you might lose your job and not be able to support them. That's why you don't bite the hand that feeds you. But what about loyalty to the law? And what about loyalty to our country? We call that patriotism. Well, these are difficult choices. And in my experience, working with 7,000 whistleblowers, there's a common reason. They act on what they've learned because they have to, to be true to themselves. 
As one of them told me, I have to keep looking myself in the mirror. Uh, and sometimes their motives are noble, sometimes they may be self-serving, but if they don't act on their knowledge for the rest of their lives, they'll be wondering, things could have been different if I hadn't been part of the cover-up. You know, one of my first clients and um, mentors and teachers, a gentleman named Ernie Fitzgerald, a Pentagon whistleblower, he exposed the world's most expensive nuts, bolts, coffee, se coffee pots, toilet seats, uh, spending hundreds of times more for the taxpayers than we'd, we'd be charged if we just went down to the hardware store. And Ernie told me that whistleblowing is committing the truth because you're treated like you committed a crime. And isn't that ironic? As whistleblowers, it's the human factor. They're the Achilles heel of bureaucratic corruption. And the most corrupt bureaucracies that produce the most heroic whistleblowers. Um, uh, these are people who make a difference. Well, you know, that's quite a sales pitch that I'm giving you. Um, uh, and one of, the, um, one of the things that I think that I have an obligation to do uh, is give you some proof <laughs> to back up these claims. Uh, uh, one of the first people that I've uh, really been impressed with was an FDA scientist named Dr. David Graham. Uh, he blew the whistle on Vioxx. Vioxx was a, a super painkiller. It was like aspirin on steroids. Um, only it turned out it was a killer painkiller. Uh, it had killed almost 50,000 Americans from unnecessary heart attacks. Uh, all of this from a drug that our government had officially decreed was safe, about as many people as died in the Vietnam War. Uh, well, thanks to Dr. Graham, public health was protected and that stopped. Uh, within a month of his Senate testimony, the company withdrew Vioxx from the market, although it was making almost a billion dollars a year in profits. And what was the reason? Uh, there were $400 billion in lawsuits. The truth makes a difference. Uh, or let's go to uh, threats to freedom from our own government. Um, there were a half a dozen whistleblowers start, starting at the telephone companies through the Department of Justice, the NSA, climaxing with Mr. Snowden, who taught us that Big Brother has moved into the homes of every American family that uses electronic communications. Uh, well, thanks to their courage, we got the USA Freedom Act, and there's some controls on that type of surveillance now. Uh, well, let's consider um, anti-terrorism. Robert McLean, whistleblower at the Federal, uh, uh, Federal Air Marshal Service. Um, he stopped the government from going AWOL during a more ambitious rerun of 9-11 in 2003. Saudi intelligence, the US counterintelligence, had confirmed that Al-Qaeda this time was planning not to attack just New York City and Washington, D.C., those cities plus cities up and down the West Coast, European capitals, Rome, London, Paris, uh, even the capital of Australia, Canberra. It was going to be the grand finale of terrorism. And our Department of Homeland Security pulled all the air marshals off when the, when the, attack, was con when the attack was going to be taking place. Thanks to Mr. McLean's disclosure, within 24 hours, uh, the government said, oh, it was all a mistake, corrected the mistake, the hijacking was prevented. These people changed the course of history. Or casualties in war. Um, Franz Geil, the chief science advisor for the Marines, uh, he learned that 90% of our fatalities and 60% of our casualties in Iraq were because we hadn't delivered for a year and a half vehicles that would actually protect our troops against landmines. And they were using ones that weren't even designed for that purpose. Well, thanks to him blowing the whistle, um, the MRAPs, as they're called, were delivered. And casualties from landmines went from 60% to 10%. Uh, what about human rights? Um, about 15 years ago, um, the situation in our country was that uh, people arriving from other nations at the airports, or African-American women coming through our airports, uh, were regularly stopped and accused of drug smuggling without any evidence. Sometimes it was sexual harassment, sometimes they just wanted overtime. Nothing to do with the law enforcement, though. Uh, and if they couldn't find any drugs in their luggage, they'd do body cavity searches inside and outside. And if they still couldn't find any drugs, 
They take them to a hospital and have up to four days of laboratory test. During that time, they couldn't contact their family. They couldn't talk to a lawyer. They had vanished. Uh, and their bodies were property of the United States government. Well, thanks to Kathy Harris, an African-American customs inspector down in Atlanta, the truth came out. The government couldn't defend itself. Uh, and four days was shrunk to two hours before they have the rights of citizenship. Or let's consider the environment. Uh, about 20 years ago at the Hanford Nuclear Waste Dump, that's where we store all of America's radioactive waste, including plutonium, the most dangerous substance on the planet. Or if you touch it in less than 240,000 years, it kills you. Uh, and uh, about 20 years ago, the contractor there held a press conference and said, um, well, we've lost track of 5,000 gallons of radioactive waste. Um, we're telling you this because we're honest, and don't worry, it can't get into the water supply or anything. Well, thanks to a whistleblower, using their books, we learned the real figure. It wasn't 5,000 gallons, 440 billion gallons of radioactive waste unaccounted for. We sent divers down into the Columbia River, the water supply for the Pacific Northwest, there were already traces of radiation in the water. Uh, thanks to a whistleblower, they started a much more ambitious cleanup effort, plugging the leaks, and we don't have the wrong kind of hot water in the Pacific Northwest today. Uh, you know, I could keep going for quite a while, but I think the point's been made. Um, whistleblowers change the course of history. Uh, and they're making more of a difference today than ever before in the course of history. Uh, and, you know, it's funny that uh, you know, our government leaders say oftentimes, well, if we want to be safe, it's very expensive. Um, uh, it's going to cost a lot of money, tens and tens and tens of billions of dollars for you to be safe. Uh, and we don't really have the luxury of all this liberty. Um, uh, we're going to have to cut back on freedom if you want to be safe. But it doesn't cost anything to listen. And whistleblowers... They make us safer by strengthening our freedom instead of canceling it. You know, the Founding Fathers had it right that freedom of speech should be the First Amendment in our Bill of Rights. You know, and the good news is, uh, if solidarity is the magic word for whistleblowers to make a difference and get away with it, they're getting more solidarity than ever before in history. When I first came to Gap, uh, they were considered kooks or traitors or nuts. Now they're lionized in the press. Unprecedented public support. Uh, is the reason why Congress, which can't get a, agree on anything, has unanimously passed 15 laws for stronger whistleblower protection since 2000. The Supreme Court Justice once said, uh, if corruption is a social disease, sunlight, that's the best disinfectant. Uh, and the reason is pretty obvious to me. In a free society, there's nothing more powerful than the truth.